Once you grasp this truth that I'm about to tell you, it'll set you free from religion. It'll set you free from parents and moms and family and governments and police. Everybody, it'll set you free. And it's simply this. You are divine. God has exploded in a crab nebulae explosion and he has come and manifested himself as billions of people. And you're one of you. And so am I. When I look at you, I see God. When you look at me, you see God. That's why God's name is I am. I am God. It doesn't mean that me, God, it means I am. When you say I am God, you have to say what is God's name? I am. What? I am God. Oh my God, then all the people's Christians run around. Oh, I told you they think they're God. I don't think anything on the other side. No, Jesus Christ said. The scripture says you are God, and the scripture cannot be broken. So he said it. Don't yeah, yeah, I'm like a master of the Peace, 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 family. How you all doing? My name is Keisha. I'm the owner of Ascendant Astrology, and I am your astrology coach. Today, I'm going to be discussing Mars entering into Libra. This video might be a little bit long. I'm going to try to keep it short and to the point, but... um. Yeah, welcome to all of my new subscribers. And um, thank you for returning. If this video resonates with you, please like, share, and subscribe. All right, so Mars enters Libra on the 27th, and it'll be there until October 11th. This transit is important because um, it's in the South Node. So Libra is currently in the South Node, and Mars is the ruler of Aries, which is in the North Node. So this has a lot to do with where we're releasing and our destiny and where we're going um the signs that will feel this the most are aries libra and scorpio because aries and scorpio are both ruled by mars mars is the ancient ruler of scorpio the south node in libra just started and it'll be there until the beginning of 2025 so Libra is a cardinal air sign. It initiates, um, it's active, and Libra is a masculine sign. Um, I actually think Libra does well in Mars simply because um, Mars being the ancient ruler of Scorpio, um, if you listen to my videos before, um, Mars, uh, Scorpio, Pluto is like the devil, the underworld, or like Saturn, or Capricorn. Um, Libra is the devil's wife, right? And so um, they get along well. <laughs> Libra is not all butterflies and rainbows. Uh, although there is some of that connected to the sign. Uh, I think it actually goes a lot deeper than that. Um, but traditionally speaking, uh, astrologically wise, Mars is in detriment in Libra. And so that just kind of means that we could see a lot more of the lower expressions of Libra, more so than the positive. I think it really, really depends because it's in the south node. And I think the South Node is the strongest any energy here regardless. And the South Node is about letting go and releasing. Um, things, habits, patterns around Libra themes that are no longer serving us. So it's going to be different for everybody. Um, but for the most part, in any case ever in astrology, if you're doing the work, you're um, taking initiative to heal and grieve and um, 
let go of past trauma, you're always going to do well during any transit, regardless. You're going to receive some kind of blessings. It doesn't mean that you get to avoid all of it. Uh, we're here on life to change and transform always and forever. And there's always going to be some work to do, but essentially you will feel this in a more positive way. Um, I also think Mars does well in Libra because it's an air sign and air and fire get along really well. And, um, but they are in detriment. They are in opposition of one another. And so I think this could be like um, a lack of action. You know, Mars isn't going to be so action oriented as it normally is in its own sign or in other signs that it's a little bit stronger in. Um, or will be more active towards air themes or Libra themes, right? So this is like communication, conflict, changes in relationships, contracts, agreements, marriage, social life, how we relate to others, mentors, counselors, and legal issues, right? I think we can see a lot more partnering and working with people. Um, and there's an opportunity to see what is working and what is not working, as well as what is and is not balanced. Because uh, Libra rules balance. It wants fairness, peace, and harmony by any means necessary, even sometimes uh, doing so, um, sacrificing their own needs and happiness to avoid conflict. Um, and we'll talk more about that, but um, yeah. The South Node represents our past patterns, experiences, traits, and behaviors that are comfortable to us. So um, skills and knowledge that you came here with, karma that you came here with um, before you were born, and what you've gained from birth all the way up until you know your present life and circumstances and situations. And uh, regardless, you have to pay back that karma. Um, but we might be holding, um, these things might be holding us back from reaching our truest potential. And so the South Node energy is going to help us clear some of that energy out so that we can take more steps towards our destiny, which in this moment is going to be having to do with Aries themes. So, um, I also think we can be a little uh, lazy um, and again, stick with things to avoid conflict because it's comfortable. Um, the South Node can bring up our need to rely on other people. We can also be looking at where we sacrifice doing things because it's best for other people and not for ourselves. And Aries rules the self. And since Aries is in the North Node, we're going to be a little bit more selfish now. Um, but not like in a disrespectful way, but especially now in this moment, specifically speaking, it's going to be more like with all these retrogrades, like I don't even have the fight in me to deal with negativity, things that don't make me happy or bring me peace and harmony, you know, just giving up. But really, it's bringing us to our highest, um, the higher levels of ourselves. And we're healing and doing the work. And so in the moment or in real life situations, this can seem pretty tumultuous for the most part. But essentially, um, these are the things that need to happen in order for us to heal. Um, the really interesting thing about this transit is that we don't really see any aspects until the end of this transit, which is in October. 
Uh, it'll square Pluto. And there's a lot of inconjuncts throughout the um this transit, but there aren't any other aspects to any other personal planets, uh, which was very interesting, actually. But I feel like this can be saying that there's going to be a lot of sneaky stuff going on or things that are going to sneak up on us out of nowhere, especially in the world. We can hear like a lot of uh, I think we'll see a lot of sneaky stuff out on the world stage. We can also see like a lot of people telling us what we want to hear. Uh, this can also be like two-faced in relationships and um, we might not see it coming. Um, so I really, you know, typically around this time, it's cuffing season and I really don't see that being a thing. I think it's Mars is cutting it out. Um, I just don't see that being a thing this year. I think um, people who are in relationships and having a hard time letting go, even though they know they need to, um, they're going to continue going on in the relationship. And around October, when we have more aspects in the square, it's going to be a square to Pluto. And it's going to be the activation of the eclipse season. Um, actually, that starts September, but we will be officially in eclipse season by October. And um, I feel like then all the shit's going to hit the fan type of stuff, you know? Um, or it could be something like... Um, you've kind of got one foot in and one foot out and there's been a lot of back and forth conversations with people. Like you're ready to kick them out, but people are like, well, let's just work on it. Let's just talk about it before you make a final decision. Um, or you you might have not have even said anything yet, you know? And once October comes, it's going to be like the, the levy breaks where you might not be able to hold back. Um, and things are going to get cut out that way. Um, I do see like if people have already separated and given up and not given, gave in. And there were situation, there are situations where it wasn't really that bad. And people come back perhaps for closure or to actually mend a relationship. It'll be gradual, slow steps towards healing and working on the relationship i do see that being a possibility but those are going to be for people who are vibrating extremely high because that is an extremely mature thing to do <laughs> and no libra or mars are neither of the two <laughs> right and so um again it's really just going to depend on how this works out for you what house this is in i do have horoscopes uh that i'll be posting tomorrow on ig so um make sure you're following me if you want to get more information on that um but i just see situations like that where people are either blindsided come october shit hits the fan or like um you you've been thinking and pondering and thinking and pondering and going back and forth and finally it's just going to be like you know what bitch it's over. <laughs> um, essentially, we're breaking free from some very karmic past situations, whether they be your immediate past or, again, past life situations that you're having to pay karma for and from another lifetime. Especially if you're having this in the 12th house, the 8th house, um, uh, this it's going to hit very heavy. Uh, personally, I think. Um, Mars is assertive, it's independent, and it's our desires. Libra is partnership, balance, relationships, and diplomacy. Libra likes to weigh in on all their options before making a decision. And Mars doesn't do that. It's assertive. It goes for what it wants, sometimes even impulsively. Um so I think we can have a hard time making decisions. Uh, 
I think we're going to avoid conflict like the plague um, and keep the status quo and peace and harmony and relationships at the risk of sacrificing your own needs. I feel like I said that already, but that's gonna, that is probably one of Libra's uh, worst traits. You know, they can be very sweet and kind and giving. They're great listeners, supporters, friends. I can hear like 800 people like, bitch, what Libra you know? Um, and you'd be right. You'd be right to make that assumption. Not all Libras might show up in this way, but Libra energy in general, that's what it exudes, right? But you have to also remember too, for all Libra sign people in any sign, where they have specific traits that they are good and bad at, they're typically always bad at it so that they can get good at it. So you literally have to go through some shit in your life in order for you to get to that higher perspective of your sign. So, and I'm speaking personally as a Mars and Libra person, I have Mars and Libra in my first house along with Pluto and Libra so quite strongly I'm an asshole just period <laughs> and I've had to go through a lot a lot to learn how to be the higher expression of Libra and I still got a lot more work to do right but I can speak personally to this that um you know on that lower expression of Libra uh, to be honest with you, I just want to fight. I don't even really want to talk about it. Like, if you're being disrespectful, I'm making a judgment call and we're fighting. It's just that simple, right? <laughs> right? And so, um, but everybody grows and evolves. Hopefully that doesn't always happen either. It really depends on how dedicated you are to want to change. And sometimes it has to be so bad that you really don't have a choice but to change because it's like, I don't ever want to deal with that ever, 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 ever again, right? And so, you know, that's just the process that comes with reaching your higher self. But um, I definitely do feel like Libras are really, really, really good at, especially if a Libra likes you. If a Libra likes you, you can almost do anything and they could care less. Um, as long as they can keep you in their life, right? And so um, at the risk of sacrificing your own needs, a relationship can keep a peaceful relationship. They can ignore your uh, bad habits and bad patterns, for sure. <laughs> Which I think is fucking hilarious, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, um, it can also be, um, nope, I said that too. <laughs> ah, this could be changes and conflicts um, and difficulty with Libra themes. Mars is war, aggression, violence, cuts, bruises, and even clumsy, clumsiness. Um, Dude, I don't know how the hell I stubbed my toe on one of my son's toys and it didn't even feel like it was that hard. Like, I mean, I remember it, it hurt, <laughs> but I don't think it was like that hard. My whole pinky toenail was like, like it, it came off. And so it wasn't like all the way off, but it was like, damn, they're really close. And today my son just stubbed it again um and now I think it's like completely off I had to put like some tape on it because that shit hurt like motherfucker but um definitely could be some clumsiness um even naivety um or kind of like heads in the clouds type of energy um kind of like Pisces um but essentially, we're no longer sacrificing our happiness. That Mars in, in the North Node 
is really going to help us um, stand up for ourselves, cut things out um, that no longer serve us. Or like, again, if you had a difficult time leaving a situation, and these don't have to be all romantic, by the way. This is this can be a leader rules all relationships. Um, if you had a difficult time letting go, I think it's going to be more easy to let go at this time. You're just going to be like, okay, you leaving? Bye. Don't let the joy hit you with the good Lord split you. Um, especially with the retrogrades, it's really not helping. And especially if people are going to be rude and disturb your peace, that's another thing. Now, a Libra will fight you for that. Um, I don't give a damn how nice they are. You disrupt the Libra's peace and it's like, oh, so you think you just going to come around <laughs> or like disrespect people being disrespectful, speaking out of line and kind of, um, calling you out of your character. Those are things that Libra typically holds uh, value in. And so if you have people like that bringing that up or coming at you in that way, it's a it's going to be a no-go for them. Like, that's not going to work. They're, they're not going to, uh, they're going to regret doing that. But I can see a lot of situations like that coming up, especially towards the end um, of this transit, which is the beginning of October. Um, this could also be like court cases and things that are unbalanced in law, like unjust judges, small claims, courts, laws, rules, and regulations change, and even the court system, good Lord knows, they need, I think the court system is the, the court system and city hall are like the only companies left in the entire world who still operate off of a system that we used in like 1990. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else is just like that. Um, I'd love to hear, uh, but where we are, those buildings are still ran like they were in the 90s. Uh, Lord knows they can use an entire revamp. But I think we could see some of those things changing or at least people requesting for it or a lot more complaints or things around that coming out in the news where it needs to be uh, some kind of change in some way or updated in some way. Um, I definitely think this could be uh, the, the workforce, you know, the way um, legal or court systems work, you know, or how to apply for positions to work there. I think a lot of those things can change as well. Um, I think we can be letting go of like counselors, marriages, our social life, contracts, agreements, and even mentors, um, either again, because you've graduated in some way, shape or form, there's an ending, a natural ending, um, or it can be rather un, un, uh, very unpeaceful <laughs> and a little shaky and uh, even traumatic and sad with Pluto. Um, yeah. Um, I can definitely see more things like that coming up. Um, on a more positive note, this transit can be more motivation to work together, to be a team player, uh, more freedom to work on ourselves. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm really not. I just feel like there might be a lot more situations out there that have a lot more work to do, especially if you take like take it out of personal context and you just look at the world relationship wise. It's like um, we have a lot of um, unbalanced situations when it comes to relationships. We have a lot of relationships that aren't coming together. You know, there is no more of that belief 
anymore, right? So when you look at it from a broader perspective, we could use a lot of work when it comes to how to work together, how to talk to each other, how to work through issues and things of that nature. And I think because of that, we have a lot more work to do. So when I say this, I'm not trying to be negative. I genuinely and honestly don't see this being any kind of flowers and cupcakes. I think there are a lot of people out there that have issues to address when it comes to relating. And Libra, I think the South Node um, access is really going to force us to look in the mirror and address a lot of those issues. Um, yeah. And typically, whenever you have the beginning of a transit start out, it always comes up or shows up in the most, in the lower expressions of that sign. And then towards the end, you get that green light or that light bulb moment that's like, oh, now I know why I had to go through that or why I've been going through something specific around whatever's coming up for you. It's like you, you learn the lesson and then you, you might trip and stumble even after the transit is over in other ways and until you get it. But for the most part, you learn the valuable lesson in the higher expressions of the energy towards the end. And because this transit is set up the way that it is, plus the South Node um, is gonna be activated during this time, I really, 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 really feel like it's backwards. So it's going to start out nice and positive and smooth. And um, I even think there could be a lot more sex going on here. Um, a lot more people impulsively jumping into relationships because remember, this time is typically cuffing season. And so that same theme can be playing out in the world. And it's something that we just normally do right? And we can go go into this with that same mindset. But again, I really, really don't see the Pluto square with the South Node hitting us in a way that's going to help that process continue in the way that it used to. I really think that we are being hardcore hit to face our um, patterns around relating in those kinds of ways where a lot of things can come up that are going to be very disruptive, very painful. We have Chiron and Aries, and um, I think it's going to be a lot stronger this time because Mars is in the, because Aries is in the North Node, where it's going to kind of hit a little bit harder. It's going to be a little bit more stronger. These are definitely things that, that have come up both because Chiron has been in Aries, as well as we had a whole year with Jupiter in Aries. And so these Aries themes have already been showing us in some way, shape, or form what this North Node wants from us. And now it's going to be a little bit, it's going to come like, it's going to hit you a little bit harder this time where you can feel it in a way where you're going to be forced to change and transform in some way. Um and that and that's just what eclipses do. Uh, so again, I'm not saying that to like scare people or anything like that, but this is definitely what the astrology is showing us is that you've already been warned about whatever this is. You can go back to the Jupiter video, you can go back to the Chiron video, you can look at, you know, whatever was coming up for you, think back to those times, but um. I'd really take the time out to think about that because whatever it is this time around when it comes up, it's not going to just, you know, bump you on the shoulder. It's going to be like, I told you. You know, that's just how, you know, that's how change happens, right? And again, it's going to be different for everybody depending on what house this is in because some people have done the work and they're going to be receiving blessings and um, moving forward in a way that is very peaceful and harmonious um, and free. They're going to feel free. Um, and 
in certain houses, you know, this energy is going to do really, really well and it's going to bode well for you. So, you know, but yeah, for the most part, I really do think this is going to be a heavy hitter. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think this could be like people taking breaks from each other. Um, and looking at ourselves in the mirror to break free from karmic patterns and behaviors and karmic relationships. Um, this is the idea of like distance makes the heart grow fonder type of thing. Um, or absence makes, makes the heart grow fonder. Another theme can be conflict resolution. Um, and um, I think we could see like a lot of th philosophical debates, legal debates, um, debates in relationships, um, accidents, injuries, physical harm, cutting, and with that mercury and um and Virgo retrograde, I think this is going to be like health or work related. Um, and so we could be like cutting out sugar because Libra is ruled by Venus. Venus loves sweet things. Um, this could be uh, issues around our immune system or lazy habits on the lower expression. Libra is very lazy. Um, this could be things with our kidneys or lower back issues. Um, I think the one thing to keep in mind if you are doing any fitness or activity or getting more active um, for health purposes to warm up before you do any kind of exercises, knowing how to pick your battles, that's going to be your strongest um, tool to lean on. Really listen to what people have to say and then make the decision is this worth ruining my peace for <laughs> you know um or you know leading by example and um not responding sometimes it has to be that way um this could also be like situations where you you're so like gone in your head like over it and over stuff or the lack of energy that comes with this transit and all the retrogrades um i feel like this could also be that you might come off that way where people might be vying for your attention in different kinds of ways and you don't even notice it because you're so focused on doing you healing you taking care of you type of energy um, and people might see that as being slighted or something of that nature. And they kind of respond immaturely and disrespectfully um, or try calling you out as a way to rattle you, to get you out of your peaceful mode, if you will. Especially if you're somebody who's known as being a drama queen or always, you know, kind of causing conflict and arguments and things of that nature. And people start to see you change, you know, they're going to do whatever it takes to try to keep you in that energy. I can see a lot of that happening. Um, and so really pick your battles when it comes to relationships. Um, asking yourself, what does it mean to be assertive? Um you can also, this can also be um, how you take action, like how you approach things to get them done, to complete them, to work through things. Uh, you could be questioning that or um, observing that or reflecting on that, what it means to you and how you would like to change it if need be. Um, this could also be uh, the question of whether you're a team player or not. Uh, especially with the Mars energy. Are you too selfish or self-centered? Um, this could also be past actions and behaviors, of impulsiveness, aggression, again, overly self-centered. You know, all these things are going to require some kind of transformation or change in some way. 
that's going to be extremely internal, very deep with all these retrogrades. And so a lot of contemplation about past actions and behaviors that you've done that might have brought up a lot of these uh, themes, feelings, and emotions um, that you'll be revisiting for sure. Um, so the moral of the story is <laughs> we'll have a lot of projecting, pointing fingers, the blame game, tantrums, people acting out. Uh, but it's not going to get you anywhere. Uh, we're going to be revisiting old conflicts, repeating bad habits, being competitive, not able to forgive, holding grudges, resentment, anger, and not wanting to take action towards things. Um, it can lead to health issues. Again, urinary system, hormones, imbalance, uh, hormone imbalance. This could also be like a lot of women's... Um, uh, uh, transgender people who are changing from men to women type conversations coming up on the world stage in a pretty big way or anything around these health themes can be coming up really uh, uh, quite loudly at this time. But um, this could also be like birth control, menopause, estrogen, ovaries, um, your posture, Libra rules your posture, and bronchitis. Um, which, by the way, you can do like elderberry or burdock root, uh, a Libra um, herbs, but you can also research on Google other stuff. Uh, those were the two that stood out to me the most, but there are a lot more things that you can do. Um, and so, you know, if you find yourself having issues with these types of things, that's also a indication of needing to heal and do something differently, right? So really sitting down and reevaluating what is not going right in your life so that you can get on track to getting um, on track in balance and healing and making those changes. Forgiveness is probably going to be probably one of the biggest things with Neptune and uh, Pisces and Saturn and Pisces. Um, as they're going to be really, really big deals because uh, Venus, um, the higher octave of Venus is Neptune. So Pisces definitely still has a lot to do with this, even though it really does it but it does uh so be mindful of the other connections that this is going to be making in your chart the other aspects it's going to be making in your chart it's going to be very important to study the things that are coming up because they can be very um passive aggressive right uh whether this is people places or health you know where it just it kind of comes up and sneaks up on you as a way to show you, like, this, if, if these things are happening in your life, these are the areas of your life that you need to work on to heal, to change, right? And so taking accountability, looking at the mirror and asking yourself the tough questions, uh, which might not be easy, but if you're willing to look at it, this transit will be way easier than if you're avoiding it. Uh, I think I talked about this before. Um, of uh, probably doing another <laughs> Libra transit because I'm a Libra rising. And every time I think about the Libra energy, I always think about myself because a lot of these themes I can relate to. I wasn't always the nicest person in the world. And I was very, very, very angry when I was growing up as a young child. And um, I don't know why. I never really assessed the why. But I'm pretty sure that had a lot to do with what led me to go into prison. So if you've heard my personal story, I talked about this, but I did time in prison. And I've come a long way since then, you know. And I always reflect on whenever I'm doing Libra energy, I always reflect on the, the moment when I changed. And I'll never forget it. I was complaining to my mother about something. and. My mom's a Libra too, by the way. Um, and I'll never forget it. 
she said to me, you know, Jamila, that's what my family calls me. I was born in Jamila Kaisha Reed. <laughs> she goes, you know, Jamila, nobody says any uh, the same thing about you for 20 years and that should not be true. And it was in that moment when she said that for whatever reason, because, you know, my mom's a, you know, a repeater, <laughs> a repeat offender, <laughs> you know, to the point where she tells the same stories over and over again. It's almost like I can recite them word for word. And she's always said that wasn't the first time that she said that to me. She said that to me plenty of times, but for some reason, this in particular time when she said that I stopped in my tracks and I got real quiet and I was like, you know what, mom, you're right. And from that day on, I wish I could tell you when it was. I'm pretty sure it was a little bit after I got out of lockup. But for whatever reason, in that moment, I was just like, I'm going to look in the mirror and I'm going to start to address some of these issues because I was not very well liked. <laughs> None of my family likes me. They're all afraid of me. <laughs> I was always ramping around wild and crazy. And like I said, I kicked ass and, and took names. You know, I didn't really give people time to talk or explain themselves or have conversations. I didn't care. You disrespect me. You got something smart to say. You can't address me respectfully. I'm whooping your ass, period. You know, and I, I because of that attitude, I learned, I was like, I don't have no fucking friends. Like, nobody likes me. <laughs> And so when my mom said that to me, I was like, you're absolutely right. And I began taking steps to really look in the mirror and address, like, would I want to be my own damn friend? Do I like myself? You know, why am I so angry? Why can't I just have a conversation? You know, what is it about me that, you know, nobody likes me? Why is that? And um, it wasn't easy. I cried many a nights to myself, by myself, before going to sleep, after waking up. I'm, I'm being dramatic right now. I'm trying to make a very heavy situation light, but um, it was a lot of work. Uh, it was very, very painful. And I'd do it again. Um, I don't regret it. Um, I'm happy that I did it. I I did do counseling. I started educating myself and uh, taking my life more seriously and, and stop bullshitting and playing around. And um, I love it. I love the fact that I've done that. I don't think it's about whether or not life is more easier or not. That's not the point because we're forever evolving and changing but it's definitely in a better place. I can definitely honestly say without a shadow of a doubt, I live in peace. You know, I love coming home. I love my life. I love what I do. Um, and I, I, I give that all to the fact that I stopped and looked in the mirror. I took initiative. I took accountability. Um, I addressed a lot of issues that I have within myself. And um, yeah, so I hope that you found this information helpful. As always, family, I love and appreciate you. Peace.